Um, this is pretty good. So, um, BGL, aka Mark Harley, aka Hella Mark Harley, has been slowly but surely populating his YouTube now with some bits of content and sharing even more juicy behind the scenes goss regarding his time at Thick Boy working with Brendan Shaw, Brian Cannon, all those kind of guys. So today, randomly, off on a whim, he just decided to drop this absolute bomb out of nowhere, which basically um, highlights and maybe exposes the fractious relationship that Joe Rogan currently has with Alex Jones and maybe just, you know, how Joe Rogan has changed over the years, despite him being a very big, big support of Alex Jones in the beginning. And now suddenly it sounds like he's kind of called on him, according to this clip on Hella Mark Harley's um, YouTube. But definitely check out his YouTube channel. I was ragging on the guy a lot because he was being a chatty patty in everyone else's platform, but not getting his own thing sorted out. But definitely go subscribe to Hella Mark Harley's channel. He's slowly but surely populating it and putting stuff on there. So definitely check him out on there and see what it is. Oh, what did you say on there? Okay, I'll read it after it's finished. But yeah, um, check him out, subscribe there. But let's change the clip. And it's titled, Alex Jones Crashes Joe Rogan's Dinner. And this is a voice note of Brenda Shaw recapping what happened when Alex Jones did crash that said dinner. Yo, so uh, we do the show. It goes great. You saw most of it. So it goes great. And then even though I didn't really plug anything, which is all good. But then uh, we all go to dinner, and Eddie invites Alex Jones, and so Alex Jones is sitting. Uh, it went ro so it went Rogan on one side, me on the opposite. So me and Rogan sitting across each other. Then Callan's next to Rogan, and then next to Callan is uh, Alex Jones, and next to me is Eddie. Right, so that's the setup. And so uh, Alex Jones gets there, and he's just eyeing Rogan the whole time. You can see he's just like it was <laughs> random. He came like he's like no, he's he, Alex Jones coming. Rogan's like, for what? And he's like, oh, he just wants to see you. And so Rogan's like, all right, yeah, he's cool. He's like, it's random, but all right. So he gets in. You can just tell Alex Jones had an agenda. So as soon as he could, Alex is like, he's like, Joe, I, I think, you know, I'm all over the news right now. And it's never been hotter in the line. And I just need a platform to do it. I, I got to come on the show. You know, I think it'd be great. And uh, that's my Alex Jones impression. And Rogan's like, what? And he's like, you know, I, I just think you and I together, I need a platform and you need to let me come on the show. And Rogan's like, stop, not stop. You're not coming to my show. And Alex is like, I think it'd be good, you know, if if I'm, I'm like a gorilla with rocks, bash them together. And you and, my, and Rogan's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Literally gets in his face, goes, what the fuck are you talking about? He goes, I, you can't come on my show, dude. He goes, you're talking about these kids that died and it's you, you don't think about the consequence for me. I don't need the fucking heat. It's not happening. And Alex is like, I know, I think it'd be good. He's like, stop, stop. Quit fucking asking me. And then uh, Eddie started going off about some conspiracy on the, you know, the government. And uh, Alex takes his phone out to film all of us. And Rowan's like, what the fuck are you doing? He's like, we're at dinner, dude. Put your fucking phone down. Don't blast this out. He's like, what the fuck are you doing? And he, dude just rogan was a savage on him and alex is like all right well and then after he realized it wasn't happening he's like all right well uh i'm, I'm gonna get going i appreciate you guys having me and you're just like what the fuck the funny thing about that clip number one is it definitely highlights how joe rogan has changed over the years joe rogan now is the kind of guy who only is only looking out for joe rogan maybe he's always been like that but i think ever since the spotify deal he's definitely been a lot more careful about who he has on his show, who he endorses, and who he co-signs. A big example for that for me was glaring one was how he treated the Brian Callen and Chris D'Elia, um cancellations and when they went through what they went through, right? Chris D'Elia being accused of diddling and running a cult of all these girls that he's getting tattooed and shit and all this sort of crazy shit. And of course, Brian Callen being accused of all the rapes. So when that shit happened, Joe Rogan went radio silent. He didn't speak about those guys ever again. And I think for a long time, maybe it was like a year plus, he didn't even mention Brian Callan's name. Chris Lee has been completely excommunicated from his brain. You know what you're saying about him. But he never would mention those guys again. And the, why I think it was funny was because before that happened, Joe Rogan wouldn't shut up about council culture, especially when it con con uh, concerned um, Louis C.K. Because the Louis C.K. story, according to people that are in the scene, how they kind of were telling it, it wasn't actually anything bad. It was with consenting adults. But I guess the girls maybe got you know, they maybe got second thoughts and they maybe complained about it after. But Lucy K was known uh, as a guy to always ask permission before he did what he did. And those two girls agreed and everything was cool. And then later on, something changed. So a lot of the guys in the scene were annoyed by it because they all know Lucy K and they all know his kinks. And they knew he was always, 
somewhat respectable about it and decent and it would never try and do anything weird about it. But regardless of what you think about that story, they wouldn't shut up about it. They wouldn't shut up about it. In any other story about cancel culture, they'll be talking about it. Oh, the women are lying, the this, the that, the cancel culture, this, cancel culture, that, you can't do nothing to... Then the moment cancel culture hits their little community, boom, everyone becomes a fucking monk. No one has anything to say. Everyone was quiet. And the, the, the Brian Callen thing, fair enough, with the rapes and the sexual allegation, it's a little bit hard to get involved in. But when it comes to Chris D'Elia and Diddling, you'd think people would like have a stance because a lot of those guys in comedy, especially quite a lot of male stand-ups, have daughters. And some of them are like maybe close to the ages of girls that allegedly Chris D'Elia might be interested in. But none of them took a moral or principal stance. They all were quiet about it, right? Quiet. But then on the other side, when it comes to Joe Rogan, what's funny about this is that with Alex Jones, for the longest time, people, before even the Sandy Hook thing happened, people were like, Alex Jones is a piece of shit. He's a conspiracy theorist. He kind of, you know, elicits fucking, uh, he's dangerous. He's putting all this stuff out there. He's reckless on his platform. People really didn't like Alex Jones for a long time. One prominent person I think within that scene was Tom Segura, who was kind of clear about how much he disliked Alex Jones. But Joe Rogan was one of the only people in media, in entertainment, who was backing and riding Alex Jones, saying, no, he's actually a good guy. No, he actually gets a lot of stuff right. No, I've known him for a while. He's really funny. If you get him drinking, if you get him not talking about crazy stuff and actually get him to structure and sit down and talk normally, he's good. Like those pods with Eddie Bravo and Alex Jones are fucking phenomenal and legendary. The one with Alex Jones and Tim Dillon are really good. Like he can actually be a decent guest. Like they kind of try to humanize Alex Jones. That's what Joe Rogan did. He humanized Alex Jones. Then the moment things went left for Alex Jones, and in this actual moment of need, when Alex Jones actually needed help, and again, I don't, I don't subscribe to him needing the help or be, being deserving of it, because what he did with those Sandy Hook victims, parents and stuff, and the whole false flag and shit, and the whole crisis actor stuff was horrible. And if he has to lose his career off the back of that, it just is what it is. That's the price you pay for playing that game. But Alex Jones's favor, in actual, look at it from Alex Jones's eyes. The moment he needed Joe Rogan, in his real moment of need, Joe Rogan completely washed his hands of him completely he's never been on the show again since those flipping since he got obviously you know found guilty of what he done with the parents and stuff and got fined that crazy amount of money i think he's meant to be you know declaring bankruptcy soon the one time he needed a platform like joe rogan's which is kind of free speech neutral say your piece anti-work all this sort of stuff joe rogan completely wiped his hands off him why because it's not beneficial for joe rogan which is fine but it's just funny to see that same guy who was a bastion of free speech, the bastion of can back, you know, going against cancel culture. Number one ditch, Brian Callen, who was literally, uh, you know, his friend of 20 plus years in the comedy scene, and then ditch somebody who he went so hard for and fought for in Alex Jones the moment things went left. So to see that happening and playing out in real time is absolutely hilarious. The other thing that's super hilarious is what Brendan says here in the beginning. This says everything that you need to know about Brendan Shaw's relationship with Joe Rogan, or this makes me think, rewind, this also makes me think why, this also makes me, this is also why I would say I'm quite simp simp sympathetic and I feel sorry for Joe Rogan in some regards because I'm a fan. I still think, you know, in terms of being a multi-millionaire, close to a billionaire type of guy, he's still pretty cool in some respects. It's a shame that now he's getting older and he's, get, he's becoming way more conservative and weird. Maybe conservative and good, just conservative and strange of his views. And, you know, he's, he's, he's just kind of one of those type of guys now, unfortunately. And he's not very um, he's not very willing to hear the other sides and certain stuff. And kind of, he's a bit dogmatic in certain approaches and a little bit kind of tunnel vision and some things. The one thing I do feel sorry about with Joe Rogan, similar to what happened with Brian Callen and how he tried to intimidate Bobby Lee, I don't think Joe Rogan knows how his friends use his name. I don't think he's aware of it of the people in his circle who basically take advantage of his name and kind of use it to do illicit things or how they view him. He might think they're his friends, but the way that they view him is sort of transactional. It's kind of like, oh, you're this guy with all this fame and this amazing platform. We're going to get as much as we can out of you and that's it. Because I've heard certain comedians, when they do podcasts, after they kind of go on JRE, say, oh, the JRE bump wasn't actually that great. I didn't get that many followers. I've seen a few comedians say that as a joke, but obviously not, not joking, they're serious. And it goes to show that they don't really value the friendship of the guy at all. They just want him for the platform. And this little clip or quip from Brendan is a clear indication of how he sees Rogan. Uh, 
we do the show, it goes great. You saw most of it, so it goes great. And then even though I didn't really plug anything, which is all good. But then- So after a fight companion, it sounds like, or some sort of podcast together, the first thing Brendan says after, you know, talking to flipping, what's his face? Um, BJ on the text about what happened is that, yeah, hey, you know, it was a good show. It was great. Even though I didn't get to plug my dates and stuff. That's what he's concerned about reporting this. Like, you know, hanging out with Joe is more so an occasion of plugging dates. So when they go into the show, instead of thinking about cool talking points or things to maybe bring up to Joe that might blow his mind or bits that might be cool to be viral, the first thing in their mind, they're probably doing it when in the Uber. They're going over their dates. Okay, have I got merch to sell? Do I have a new collaboration? Am I playing somewhere that's got... What, or they may be looking at the dates thinking, okay, what dates are low on ticket sales? Let me mention that one, not that, that one. That, that's what they're doing. They're never thinking about the show. They're not thinking about how good it will be to see their friend again. Oh, it's been a long time. Joe's in Austin. Let's go hang out with him. Nah, they're just thinking, you know what? What what what, what place is low on tickets? Okay, what, what place is... What, where can I sell the merch? That's the first thing they got in mind. That's why... I, I feel a little bit sorry for Rogue in that regard. That that's who he hangs around with. Do you know what I mean? People like that. And it's also funny in this clip, um, where Brendan says something like, Oh, like Joe was surprised that Alex Jones was coming. So clearly they weren't even talking at that time. He probably completely aired him. So Alex Jones has been probably texting Rogan a lot on the side. Uh Jones Rogan probably left him on scene, on Instagram, on Texas, on WhatsApp, and then Thingy, Alex Jones heard through Eddie Bravo that he was going to be in a restaurant and then he bum rushed the restaurant. And maybe Eddie Bravo is kind of, you know, feels bad for Jones as well because he's like, hey, like, Rogan was your guy and he used to ride for you. And now suddenly you've been, you know, found guilty in court. He doesn't want anything to do with you because he doesn't want to fuck up his fucking Spotify check. I thought that was very telling. That was very, very, very telling in that regard, in that relationship. But Jesus Christ, man, what an absolute mess. The only thing it's worth to say from it is that how gossipy and chatty patty are these guys like really brendan has known brendan has known rogan what let's say estimate brendan's known rogan 10 plus years maybe maybe 10 years right rogan as well was a severely severely like severely private person really really private doesn't talk about his family much doesn't talk about his wife doesn't talk about his kids step to what nothing zero keeps it stum, keeps it tight extended family Everything's really kind of close circle. It clearly, he's who he hangs out with. Also, he picks who he hangs out with. Um, I've heard him mention on, on podcasts what they do when they go to restaurants because he always gets bothered in restaurants and people want to get signatures and pictures. He'll usually book a private room somewhere. So he goes to a restaurant where it's got like a private dining area. They'll come in through the back and they'll all eat there and hang out and drink and he'll pay the bill and everything will be amazing. But he's very selective about where he goes. So he can't really go normal places. He can't really go hang out in normal places and do regular things with people and shit. He kind of has to make it, you know, he kind of has to live in this weird little bubble. But Brendan has known Rogan for a while. Brendan only knew BGL for how long? Two years? Three years? Maybe four? But let's say, let's say three. Let's say four to be, to give him, to be charitable. He's known BGL four years. And here he is spilling the beans on a pretty, I won't say intimate, but it's a private matter that's that's gone on between two friends, two former friends that are in this media world. It's hard to navigate. It's hard to figure out what to do, really. If one of your close friends, has Alex Jones, turns out to be a little bit of a liar and a charlatan and he does something crazy and he gets found guilty in court and involves children and you're Joe Rogan and you've got a Spotify deal that's still fresh, you don't want to fuck it up. It's a bit of a difficult situation. I'm not saying it's easy, but it's difficult for sure. But it's not going to be helped if you've got a friend that's spilling the beans from strangers, essentially. Because BGL is not a close friend. He's a stranger. And now BGL is in a situation where he's fallen out with Brendan. And here he is leaking all this stuff that should be private. And that goes to show these guys, it's not B, I wouldn't say it's BGL's fault. It's most of these comedians, because they're so gossipy and chatty patty, they're legitimately telling people that are just new in their lives information about friends that are really like you know long long friends like actual friends people they know for ages they're like willingly giving them bits of information that should be kept private to friendship groups it's pretty horrible so it goes to show that if anything if you're a comedian in that circle or in the jerry extended universe or in la in general if you want to keep secrets just don't tell anyone maybe tell your partner or whatever but don't tell anybody in the industry any secret whatsoever because eventually it will get out because I'm sure this story, we've only found out about it now because BGL shared this clip. 
but I'm sure if you're involved in the that kind of little scene of you know comedy and Jerry extended universe and Bappaverse, I'm sure you would have heard this already. If you're about, you would have probably heard this story. Alex Jones was get it was trying to get on Rogan. Rogan aired him a lot. Wasn't answering back his texts, and then Alex Jones ambushed them when they were at dinner and tried to rag and tried to basically pressure Joe Rogan to get him to be on the show again. And Rogan basically chucked him out of the restaurant. I'm sure people have heard that story, and look at them because they all chatty patties. They all chatty chatty patties, and it's absolutely horrible. So really, Brendan, like you know, as much as Brendan thinks he doesn't have any real friends, Rogan probably is even worse because his guy, his guy, guy. In terms of Brendan, is here spilling the beans for a new friend who he doesn't even know. Does even Rogan even know fucking Brendan? Does he? Does Rogan even know? Does Ro- sorry, does Rogan even know BGL? Probably doesn't, but he knows every intimate thing about him. Anyway, let's let's look at the disclaimer. He looks like BGL has been responding to some of the comments online. What did he say here? I haven't read this. Um, BGL says here after the video got put out, and I guess he got some response. For anyone complaining that I'm airing out, oh my god, how much text has he written here? Should I press read more? Let's see how much text it is. Oh, okay, cool. One prayer off. For anyone complaining that I'm airing out personal stuff, it's not a good look for me. I'm just giving Bappa a taste of his own medicine. He would constantly use private stories of stuff that happened behind the scenes involving me or retell anecdotes directly from my personal life as fodder for entertainment on his podcast. And typically, they were full of exaggeration, lies, insults, and both direct and indirect. This is what Brendan believes in. Other people's personal lives and stories should be aired publicly on YouTube for entertainment. Right, Papa? And this doesn't even make him look bad. Just thought it was a funny story and the Alex Jones impression makes me laugh. I'm like Gorilla with two rocks smashing them together. Hmm. Hmm. That's a bit weird, isn't it? Like I said before, I, I don't really know the answer. I really, I really wish some of you guys in the chat maybe could pontificate. What do you think is BGL Mark Harley's issue here? Because he seems to mention this a lot. He has an issue with Brendan for getting on stage and telling jokes that aren't necessarily true. Which I, which I think is a bit weird of a stick to beat Brendan with because we all know he's severely unfunny and shouldn't be doing stand-up in the slightest and is devoid of talent, clearly. But this whole kind of lying on stage by making it seem like it's a real thing as a joke, that's an integral part of comedy. Like Everyone does that. They punch up stories, they punch up anecdotes, they just fabricate entire things just to like, like it's just is what it is, right? I mean, it's not that big of a deal, but B just seems to have a big bone to pick about Brendan doing it. He doesn't like it. Now, the other part of it could be self explanatory because he did mention that Brendan said something in one of his jokes where he he basically gave the impression that BGL was sending out dick pics. And obviously, at the time, or even now, he's in a relationship, which obviously isn't great. So it kind of makes him look bad because, you know, the lady's thinking, what, when you're on the road, what are you doing kind of thing. But that's, that's maybe one incident. But overall, he seems to really have a real bee in his bonnet about the whole, like, telling stories behind the scenes and then doing it on stage. I wonder what that's about overall. He seems to not like that in the slightest. But in general also, this message is also a clear indication and reminder that BGO absolutely hates Brendan now. Like, to the core. And that's why sometimes I don't really have a lot of time for BGO. Because I feel like at the time, I kind of did respect him in a way because I felt like, hey, if you're going to be Brendan's friend, despite knowing how much of a douchebag he is, that's somewhat honorable. The fact that you're willing to be someone's friend and be with them and kind of hold them down, even though you know for the most part, you can kind of get why people don't like him. You understand, but you know, you look past it because that's your boy. But then once they fell out, he then started to immediately run to and kind of attack him the way like anybody else would that doesn't really know him too well i'm not really too sure about that but this might just all be, i might just be answering my own question this might just do the money because i remember someone mentioned the other day like even i was saying like if i was owed a fiver 10 pounds 20 pounds i would be follow i would be throwing the craziest wobbler online so i can't imagine if you're bgo and you're being owed was it like 10 grand or something he said i don't know how much it is 15 it's, it's in the thousands like how crazy that would make you act and how kind of you know you know reckless and willing to just lay out anything you do just to kind of get your money back to get a reaction and get the person to kind of acknowledge you that might be the thing but yeah let's see some of the replies i think it's reply was it jesus christ or stupid what are saying here i want to see what other people are saying to him about this uh let's see because it looks like the, re- the replies haven't been just haven't been the greatest it looks like because if he's addressing it that way i think other people might be- okay oh, okay cool there's there we go there's other there's other posts that have been upvoted. So let's just see the other ones that have been upvoted. 
that that might that might give us a better indication of what the general climate is like, what people responded that video into. But to me, like, again, it just it just made me think that these comedians are number one, they're chatty patties. Number two, no one really has any friends in that circle because everyone tells each other secrets. Um, so yes, yeah, it's, it's a little bit of a shit show with these guys. But let's see what is said here. Yo, so uh, the, uh, the, uh, no, shut up, enough, Brendan. Let's see what the. <laughs> if you want to hurt me, brother, you hurt me. Um, let's see what they're saying here below. Um, let's see what the up the most upvoted ones are saying. Uh, number two, what's that one? The six here. You're only at twenty k views. You need to buy another nine hundred and eighty k <laughs> if you don't hit a million. That's like a, that's a good little Brendan this there. You're a despicable human. You confided in you as a friend, calling his bro, and this is what you do with it. Embrace the karma coming your way. Huh. I don't think that's 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 fair. Like I said before, I just think it's just funny. It's just it's more so on Brendan, to be honest. Why are you telling your friend of ten years business to your friend you just met the other day? That's the thing I don't understand. I think BJ is free to do what he wants with it. It's Brendan more so. He's out here really telling fucking Joe Rogan's business, which makes you believe that whole slang and dick thing was true. Um Keep the leaks coming, Mark. You're funny. We welcome you with open arms, Mark. Okay, people seem to be enjoying it. I don't know. What's the chat saying? What do you guys think of that of that little um, of that little clip from BGL? Do you care? Are you bothered? Not really. Let me know. Let me know. 